Okay, in this video clip we're going to be talking about graphs. Graphs are a very useful way of presenting a lot of information in an easy to digest way. So it's a good way of presenting lots of information. So we can understand it, hopefully. Now, we're going to be doing dealing with graphs. So today, we're, right now, we're going to cover a little bit on how to draw a basic graph and how to read off a graph. And then we're going to do a distance time graph and we're going to see how distance time graphs can also give us information. So, first thing, we're going to do a standard Cartesian graph. So, what we have is we have two x-axis. We've got x-axis and a y-axis. Cool. And a graph is going to have information. So, we've got to label these. So, I'm going to say this is time. Normally, because I'm going to be doing a distance time graph. Normally when we're doing a graph, the thing that we change goes down the bottom. The thing that we go, we're measuring goes up the side. So often the thing we're changing is time, or we're measuring what happens at various times. So time usually goes down the bottom, not always, but about 90%. Up here we're going to be putting distance. Okay? These graphs also, these labels, have to have units. So we're going to use the basic units, so time is going to be measured in seconds, distance is going to be measured in meters. Every graph should have a title. So it should say, so it's this one versus this one for something. So it's going to be, we look at the up one, so it's distance versus Look at the cross one, time, or, and then it's going to be something like a walking lecturer. Cool. Now let's actually stick something on there. So let's take an example. I'm standing here. So just at the time is zero seconds. I walk across to the side of the board. Up for a couple of seconds and then I walk back. So, how can we represent that? So, basically, in the first couple of seconds, okay, I admit it, I don't walk very far, walk very fast. I walk from there to there, so what's that about two meters? So, I walked about two meters. I stopped at the end, so we're about three seconds. And then I walk back. Okay, so what's this mean? So if I look at this at the graph, this says the time that was happening. So 1001, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007. So this is the time of what happened. This shows the distance I am from here. So if this is zero meters, I walk across to here, two meters. So, I started here, as I walk away, as I walk away from this point here, just I increase my distance till I get to two meters. Then I stop there, as I'm not moving, my distance isn't changing. And then, when I'm over here, I'm two meters away, I start walking back. As I start walking back, I start moving towards the zero. So the distance between me and here decreases. So what this graph tells me, at this zero, at this zero, seven second time, how far have I traveled from, how far along here am I? So let's try, let's try another distance graph. Um, a bus is at a stop that drives to um, a city 10,000 meters away, so it travels 10 kilometers, which is far, but we're doing an example. And uh, 2,000 seconds 
it stops for 600 seconds for 10 minutes to pick passengers then drives back in 1800 seconds so it's a quicker trip back so let's do a crack so down here we're going to have the time up here we're going to have the distance actually it's got the time remember time is measured in seconds distance is measured in meters okay so time is zero at time zero the bus is at the bus stop the bus then drives oops need to be a straight line 10,000 meters and that takes 2,000 seconds so the bus then stops that means it's not moving any further away so that means this stays at this point here for 600 seconds so what's that 2,000, 2,000, 2,600 seconds it then starts back up again and it drives it back where it started from and that took 1800 seconds okay. so 2000, is that 4000? so at 4400 seconds it's back where it started ok so this means that I can look on here at any point on here and tell how far away the bus is going to be. So, two and a half, 2,500 seconds. I look at this, read up, I know that the bus is at the far end. And a thousand seconds, I know it's at a halfway to the other city. Yeah. So, this is a very useful tool. There is another very useful tool about distance time graphs. Okay, remember we had a graph before of me walking. Okay, so I took, I travelled two metres, two seconds, I stopped for five sec uh, three seconds, and then I walked back, two seconds. Okay, we can tell, get some information. Let's look at this line here. Let's look at this here. Let's make that dash line. Okay. If you know anything about gradients of lines, this is good, otherwise you're going to have to brush up, or trust me on this. If we look at the gradient, looking at the gradient, I'm just going to look at the gradient of this bit there, that bit there. So I'm just going to look, I'm going to break this up into part three bits, A, B, C. So A is when I'm walking from this side of the board to that side of the board. So B is when I'm standing over here, looking happy, and C is when I'm walking back. So, looking at the gradient, the gradient M is equal to change in Y over change in X. What does that mean? That's the final position of Y. We look at where we finish, and so we subtract the initial. We do the same for X final six initial this is a very useful thing to remember the change in anything is going to equal the final amount minus the initial amount that's what change actually means in physics you look at the final amount and then you subtract the initial amount so if I take this let's anyway let's have a look at this if we look at what's on that y-axis the y-axis is measuring distance equals change in distance and the x-axis is measuring time and when you have a change in distance over change in time that's called velocity that means this gradient here is the velocity of my walking so this so V is equal to Y final minus Y initial over X final minus X initial. 
So let's choose a couple of points. This point here, just looking at this bit here, let's ignore that. Let's just look at that bit there. This is the final point. This is the initial point. So we look at, what we're going to do is read off, because it says y final, we look at the y value, we look up here, and we read across until we see that there. So at 2 seconds, my final velocity is 2, well my final distance is 2 meters. Minus, then I subtract, this is my, this is going to be y initial, which is going to be 0. Divided by the time. The time, at this point here, is 2 seconds. That's the final time, but at the initial time, part, it's zero seconds, which strangely enough is equal to two meters over two seconds, which is equal to one meter per second. I must be really zipping up one meter per second. Okay, so that's the procedure. What we, if we look at the slope or the gradient of this line, this tells me the velocity. So, because so velocity and point A, and those are a little subscript A to say in this part here, equals one meter per second. What's the velocity going to be here? Okay, so now looking at this part, part B only, this is now going to be the initial, it's going to be the final. So let's do this again. So for part B, the final value of y, in my here, two meters. The initial value is also two meters. What's the final time? Um, it's going to be five seconds there, isn't it? Seven seconds. So the time is five seconds. Reading where it says f, it's five seconds. Where it says i, the time is two seconds equals 0 divided by 3, which is equal to 0 meters per second. Does that gel with what we know? We know that I walked from here to here. Then I stood here for 3 seconds. So when I'm standing there, my velocity is indeed 0 meters per second. Woo! This is good. And let's do the last part. So for, so for BB, the velocity at B is 0 meters per second. What's the velocity in the C? This is a little trickier. Good. So again, for C, this is now the initial value. This value here is now the start value. Because we're just looking at this two second period here. This is going to be the finish value. Okay, so we look at this, the value of y at this point here is zero. Zero meters, not meters. Minus, and then we subtract the initial value. The initial value was two. It was two. Over, the final time is seven seconds. Minus the initial time, five seconds. Equals What's that going to be? Me equals minus 2 over 2 equals minus 1 meter per second. So V C equals minus. Don't forget the minus sign. So does the minus sign make sense? What does the minus sign actually mean? Well, it means if the velocity this way is positive, means that velocity that way is negative. So what's basically saying is when it was positive here, I was walking this way. When it's negative, like it is here, I was walking this way. So yes, it does make sense. What this minus sign says is I am walking the opposite way to what I was walking there. Whew. Okay. Now,
enough physics, probably your brain's fried. Go and, if you can, find like, some examples in some books somewhere. Give them a try. But this is, as I said, graphs are a very, very useful way of presenting large amounts of data. And, yep, give it a try. Good luck on your physics, and I'll catch you next time with probably acceleration and kinematic equations.